right. I've been waiting for this baby. I got a little uh, oscilloscope that was on sale uh, from Siglent. I used to have another scope. It was a Rigo, that, that cheap one that everybody uses. And it works great, you know. But I just sold it. I don't know why. I got tired of it. And I just wanted something else. Um, this is not really the scope that I wanted. Um, the one I want is like $3,000. And I emailed Siglent. Uh, to see if they had a student discount or something and then I mentioned to them my YouTube channel and the blog and then I guess instead of you know offering me a student discount they were kind of got more interested to see if I had enough viewers to make it uh, I guess uh, valuable for them to give me a scope I wasn't asking for a scope I was asking just for a student discount. So once I told them I had a blog and the website, I guess they forgot that what I really wanted was just a student discount and not a free scope. But anyways, this baby was on sale for like 400 bucks, more or less, on their website. And it's their previous generation. The new generation is the 5000 next. This is the 2000. And I really like it. I really like the form factor. I was used to my other scope, uh, the Rigol, being like short and long, and this one is nice and tall, which is what I really like about it. And it's only a two channel, and I got it one because it was on sale, and two because since it's since it was pretty relatively cheap, I'm gonna use it um, just while I can save up to get the one that I really wanted, which is the 5000 series um, with 350 megahertz, and that one is like $3,500. So I'm going to save up for that eventually. In the meantime, this will definitely suffice. Uh, two channels, 70, meg uh, 70 megahertz. Uh, it should definitely do the, the trick. Um, it looks really sexy. Um, it's already going to have a spot on the bench right there where the uh, other right goal used to be. Um, and I like Siglent products, I'm not going to lie. I have their power supply. I have a multimeter by them. Um, and I just love it. I really love it. This power supply is great. It, I mean, one thing that led me more to their products is if you look at other power supplies, especially in like on eBay or whatever, they're always those crappy ones with those crappy screens and their power supplies they have these TFT screens and they just they look great I love them so this is a, a dual channel and then it has a third channel for 2 volts 3.3 volts and 5 volts and then these two channels can be uh, paralleled or put in series this is a four and a half digit multimeter they also have a five and a half digit I believe obviously you know, pay a, pay a pretty penny for all of that. But right now, it's all about this guy. The SDS 2070. Oh, shoot. The camera's going to fall. 2072. It is so sexy. I just I love it. I love the taller look of it. That Rigo was... I don't know. It just looks like a toy. Um, Right here, I'm guessing I have the cables and the power plug, the USB. Uh, this is the power cord and two probes for the channel and a quick start guide. Um, I'm going to take a look at that. You also get the uh, quality assurance thingy. So yeah, this is cool. Um, so this is definitely great. And I sold my Rigel, like I said, because I was tired of it. Um, and then as soon as I sold it, I kind of regretted it because I want to get back on a project that I've been working on for a while. And, um, I need more space. Alright. Oh, this thing is sexy. Yeah. That looks great. Look at that. Look how tall it is. I love it. The screen is bigger than the Rigo. It's just gorgeous. Their new one, the screen is even bigger. And it's all touch screen. If you go on YouTube and look up the uh, SDS 5000X, it's a beauty. But anyways, so now I'm going to uh, kind of go into this 
other unboxing thing I want to do. Maybe I can do it like this. I'm sorry that I'm moving the camera so much. Um, I've been really wanting to make a motor driver. Um, I have, let's see if I can find it here. I have something like this. Um, it's by a company called Crocytron, I guess. Um, I don't know if you can see that name right there. Anyways, um, I forgot what this is. I think it's two channels, 10 amps. Something like that. Anyways, um, so yeah, so I want to design one of these, right? But this is this is, doesn't give me the kind of current that I need. I need a lot more current. I have these motors. If I could whip one out for you guys. Let's see. Ugh, and it's heavy as well. So I have this motor from a wheelchair. It's huge. It's heavy. And this thing draws like 10 amps with no load, you know, so that little thing is not going to cut it. Um, the, I have two of these, I'm just showing you one. The ultimate goal is to attach these to a lawnmower and build a whole microcontroller project with, a, um, with one of these. And then have a radio controlled lawnmower. It's nothing out of this world. Um... If I really wanted to, I could have done this ages ago. The thing is, I'm a, you know, I'm an electronic engineering student. I don't want to buy little modules and plug them in and yay, look what I made because I didn't really make it. I just plugged in modules. So my whole purpose is to build it as much as I can myself. With that being said, I'm trying to build a motor uh, controller. Now, like I said, this one definitely is not gonna be enough. There's other mar there's uh, other motor control controllers in the market. Um, the popular one among uh, robotics people is the Sabertooth. Um, that one has a, a much better uh, current rating than this one, and that's more along the lines of what I need. But it's like two hundred dollars, so I'm not gonna spend that much on, on just a motor on something that. At the end of the day, it's just MOSFETs and, and, and compa capacitors, so I figured I could figure out how to make it myself. So I've been doing some research and taking some courses. And um, what I really want is, okay, anybody can make an H-bridge, right? You got your P-channel FETs and your N-channel FETs, and you start switching them and all that nice stuff. The thing is, I want to make it with all N-channel FETs because that's going to give me a uh, much better efficiency. And that requires bootstrapping the top side uh, MOSFET. So then you have to get this um, sort of special drivers that will drive that, that will bootstrap that top FET and all of that great stuff. I'm um, not going to get into all of that. So that's what this is. I ordered um, a bunch of uh, N-channel FETs from uh, Mauser. So we have um, the MIC 40, MIC 4605-2 is a, a half bridge driver by uh, Microchip and that's what's going to drive my MOSFETs. And the Dash 2 version is great because um, it takes a PWM signal and it'll drive the bottom MOSFET in complement with the top MOSFET because when you're doing half bridge configurations you don't want both. MOSFETs to um, be at the same obviously uh, a state and I think it also has its own dead time because when they're switching there's a period where they're both kind of meet in the middle and then you have shoot through and you don't want that so I think uh, that MOSFET driver takes care of that uh, I also have in here uh, obviously the, the, the end channel FETs Another thing I was thinking about, since I want to kind of save money a little bit so I can buy my scope, <laughs> is getting cheaper MOSFETs but putting them in parallel. And that causes its own problems, even though MOSFETs are pretty easy to um, use in a parallel um, configuration. And then I got an STM8, because I've never in my life used an 8-bit ST microcontroller. 
so I was like, why not? It was like eight bucks. So here you have, yeah, these are the MOSFET drivers. Um, these things, I don't even know if I should show them because they're tiny as hell. And believe me, this is not my first time ordering these drivers. Uh, I've, I've fried a good amount of them. They're tiny, but I have these little breakout boards where I solder this on and it turns it into a little uh, dual in line package. Yeah, I have fried. This is probably like my second time I ordered 10 of these. I fried the rest because, again, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. But now I have a better idea. Uh, these are the MOSFETs themselves. Ooh, they're sexy. So hopefully you can see them. It's just a, a T220 a package. So, yeah. If you want to know a specific model, they are right there. IPP something. Um, they are 30 volts, 50 amps. I believe 1 milliohm RDS on. So that's great. And here is the... Uh, the STM8 microcontroller. Now, what's cool? I didn't know that these microcontrollers bring like onboard EE prompt. Here's the ST Link. That's ST Link. Here's the actual. Um, let's just open it up. Come out, little guy. So cool, yeah. So there it is. Um, I'm hoping camera will feel like focusing today. Do you want to focus? No, you don't like 8 bit? Guess not. Anyways, you guys can check them out. Um, so, this little 8 bit ST microcontroller um, has an internal EE PROM, which is pretty cool, and uh, capacitive touch sensing. So, they included like a little touch button so you can prototype. And they break out all the pins, and they even have this uh, little side prototyping area if you want to use something there. And this part breaks away, and here's your typical ST-Link stuff. Uh, so, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, another thing I haven't forgotten, guys, is that I have, uh, I have those videos that I want to make where I show you how I program a bunch of ST sensors. And I also recently uh, did some code to, to use this thing. This is a, a incremental rotary encoder. Uh, which is pretty neat because you can get like a brushless motor which you know they just spin really really fast attach it to some sort of reducing um, gear and belt or whatever attach this to it and you basically have a really really high depth high resolution um, sort of uh, I don't want to say stepper motor but you can control basically where um, the brushless goes but again, I'll get around to all that. Right now, what I really want to do is play with that bad boy. Alright guys, catch you later.